online. Screenshots. F***ing everything. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the final recap for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City Season 4 for the final part of this reunion. We need to discuss what exactly went down in this last episode. First off, I want to start off by saying this season of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City has put many franchises and their respected seasons to shame. Um, it has been a journey really tagging along and I I've been so entertained heavily that I have to say that The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City has become one of my favorite franchises. But nonetheless... I am here to give you guys my honest thoughts and opinions. I am going to start off um, by kind of giving you my thoughts on each and every single cast member. And I want to start with Whitney. Whitney, you definitely were a little quiet during this reunion. Whitney was... You know, not saying much. She didn't give much. I really hope that for the next season, she gives us something more. I kind of feel it in my gut that maybe Whitney and Justin are going to try to open up their marriage. And this could be actually a good storyline for the both of them so that she could stay on the show and how she navigate, navigates all of that. But nonetheless... Whitney was very quiet during this reunion and she didn't contribute much. Next up, I want to talk about Miss Meredith. Meredith was also a bit quiet, but she definitely did gather Monica all the way together when Monica maybe slipped up in her words and falsely accused the people that were sitting with her of doing things that they did not do allegedly i mean who knows meredith at the end of this said that her biggest regret of the season definitely was having conversations off camera that could not be you know traced back in case of emergency such as this next up i want to talk about Lisa and one thing that Miss Lisa Barlow and I love me a good baby gorgeous moment needs to learn is to let the people speak please Lisa you have been so obnoxious when you do not let people talk it very much gives such an extreme ick to me that I'm like, please, please, let, let, let the others get to their point. Even if it's total BS, grill them later. Grill them after 15 seconds. It doesn't take much. Next up, I want to talk about Mary Cosby. Honey, Mary lives in her own world. You really have to understand her vibe to appreciate the comedic relief that Mary brings. Mary is not for the faint of heart. She, uh, she is sometimes offensive. She might come off as rude. She might say the wrong things, but Mary is definitely here to stay. I feel it in my gut that she will be on season five, and I hope that Mary is going to reprise a full-time housewife role. I wouldn't be mad at it at all because we have a very small cast as is. And I think with Mary being full-time, has she been full-time in season one or two? I think she's been full-time in season one. I think with Mary reprising her role as a full-time housewife, I think that could lead to great things with the show because Mary is just the thing that keeps on giving. I like the way that Mary wanted to kind of 
stay by Monica's side. I like the way that she was kind of looking out for her. It is something that we are not familiar with, Mary. I think that Monica kind of brings up the little sweet side to her. For whatever reason, I think she does feel connected to her because she has been in the same shoes as her. You know, being on the quote-unquote receiving end of the other ladies. Even though, you know, to be completely fair, what Monica did... We'll talk about that in, in her segment when we discuss that. But, um, yeah, I think Mary's look also was amazing. She she was the best dressed hands down this reunion. Her hair was laid to the heavens. The blue complimented her so, so good. The cut of the dress, the length, uh, the simplicity of it, and then the outrageous, you know, stacking of jewelry on both wrists. It just gave me everything I needed. Um... You know, Mary Cosby is a very controversial character, as I've already said, but, you know, you love... I, I, I just... I can't... Def I, I, I have to defend her. I can't defend myself on this one. It's just something that I love watching. Mary on SLC. Next up, I want to talk and, at this point in the video, give my shout-out to my Greek... Sister, Miss Angie Katsanevas, girl. When I tell you, when Angie came on season three, I was not the biggest fan. I definitely wasn't on the Angie hate train as everybody was because I definitely saw some potential. But... The way Angie K has become one of my favorite loved housewives of all time needs to be studied, y'all. Angie K has grown so much on me. I think she brings it all. Angie K is kind. Angie K is smart. Angie K is funny. Angie K is very quick witted. I mean, those, I, it, it, she read the people around her at this reunion and she did it in a manner that is just so calm, effortless, and classy, but also sometimes giving you some real good backlash and outrageous. The way when Monica said, Did you just call me a brown rat? and she just said, Brown rat, you idiot. I was getting all my life. I was here for it. Angie has the look. She is beautiful. You just see it in her face. She's happy to be there. She, she, she was born to do this. She has the prettiest family. Her husband is so handsome. Her daughter seems so sweet. The dog, are you kidding me? The house, the multiple salons, and baby Angie K is moneyed down. Have you seen her sunglasses collection? Have you seen her home? And actually admitting to Aline in times of COVID when, you know, everybody was out here getting some type of help from the state. I mean, I can speak for myself. I don't live in the U.S., but where I'm at, the businesses here definitely got a tax cut and some help from the government and who who is angie to not kind of you know dabble into that as a smart businesswoman but i loved how she went back and forth with monica i loved how she is always very happy to share her you know greek in culture and Greek traditions, it just, it gives me everything I needed more. And if Angie K does not stay on this cast for season five, I am going to boycott the show and I'm definitely not going to be watching. I mean, let's be real, I'll probably be watching, but I won't give them... I'll find another way to watch the show without giving them a view because I think... Angie deserves to be here and Angie deserves to stay 
for next season and several seasons ahead. Next up, I want to talk about Monica. And this is going to be my longest segment. Monica and this reunion, I... Listen, I don't think what Monica did is so outrageous. I don't think what Monica did has been so horrendous. I, if I were in their shoes, I would have personally thought that what Monica did definitely was weird, strange, and, you know, a little backstabby. But let's be real for one, for one tiny second. Which housewife in this new age, definitely, doesn't want to come onto the show, wants to have a seat at the reunion, wants to have a seat at the table when the group takes vacations interna- internationally who in their right mind wouldn't want to be a part of that hell if i were to you know in my next lifetime be born a woman and you know somewhere where i would have the opportunity to give housewife realness on a show and get paid millions of dollars after a couple of years and initially you get met with a good 60k check and then you get up and up and up and then you're in the hundreds 200s 400s 800s who would say no to that and who would want to aspire to get to that place just because at the beginning you're coy or you're the woman selected to be in the starter cast I mean, it, 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 it doesn't really make you better. I don't think that... I, I saw a lot of classist views on Monica this season from pretty much everybody. And I didn't like that. It kind of did rub me the wrong way a little bit. But, but, to be fair, I as a half-time, as a part-time Monica Defender was disappointed in seeing her not being able to give and perform for an apology. An apology that could have probably even saved her role for season five. And thinking of this in a business perspective... Monica should have done what Heather did times three, okay? I think Heather struck up a really nice apology that seemed mostly genuine. Um, She definitely did give a little bit of... To me, to me, I question Heather a lot right now because of the whole black eye thing with what came out and so on and so forth. We'll talk about this later on in the video. But how come that Monica, after, you know, being exposed as rea- as being part of Reality Monty's, uh, how come Monica didn't strategically kind of sit down in her home with someone, I don't know, her mother, her eldest daughter, and kind of go through how she would approach this. I'm I'm pretty sure she did that, but it was just not sufficient enough. It was just not apologetic enough. She really could have buttered the bread with that one if she had it right from the beginning and had been apologetic because I felt that Andy, yes, was holding her feet to the fire, but... Also, I felt that Andy was trying to kind of hand her a piece of an apology that she could write out so that, you know, hopefully the cast would agree uh, to her staying onto the show to film. Because it definitely gave that Andy was amazed by this season. He was entertained and he wanted to keep the good vibes going and... 
he tried to definitely help her out and I was so mad, literally screaming at my screen as to why she wouldn't just roll with it, even if it, it, you guys, even if it wasn't that genuine, I think that if she had apologized rightfully and kind of, you know, said her piece to each and every single one of them and really explained it and not talked uh, both sides of her mouth, because on one hand, you didn't get paid by Jen, but then Jen owed you money, you and your friend, I guess. So it's those kind of examples where I'm like, well, you were an assistant. You probably didn't get paid in the beginning. Maybe you did get did get paid at the end. Or with by Oda's money, you meant owed money to your friend. Then I would have loved for Monica to specify a bit more so that, you know, her credibility wouldn't go down the drain. So... I thought Monica did great on her first reunion. I think Monica landing first seat has is 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 an accomplishment. I mean, if we are comparing a Monica Garcia to a Gina Kirschenheiter, honey, or to a Robin Dick, actually, I mean Robin gives us her honest true life. Sometimes she puts a few breadcrumbs behind her Patreon wall, but that's besides the point. That's for another video. But if you compare a Monica to a Gina from OC, baby, Gina has been scathing by for the past six years that she has been on the show. And Monica did all of that in one single season. As much as we have to hold her feet to the fire, and I think rightfully so for some of the stuff that she was behind, we have to give her props that she had major accomplishments in this one season. She helped put Jen in jail. Um, could she have used her time more wisely? Especially while it's, you know, herself going through things in her life. Yes. But was it maybe kind of an escape for her to escape those things in her life? Probably. Um, listen. I... Obviously she's fired. Obviously she won't be coming back for season five. But I can't help to but think in my gut that she will be back somehow. He said, Andy, on, in an interview, said that sh they all need to cool down for a quick moment. They'll go into production for season five. And I'm very sure that, that they'll go into production in the first week of February. So basically, child, what day is it? Basically, the 26th of January. Uh... So, no, it, it is the 26th of January. You guys, I've been so super tired all day. I can barely string a sentence together, B-I-T, but I'm trying. I'm trying to pull through. My schedule has been so, so crazy. And I am behind on RHOBH doing the SLC recap right now. And, um... I slept one hour today because I drove a friend to the airport, but that's besides the point. Where was I? Basically, they'll film the next season in four effing days. And I, I think that they will bring her back in some form or some capacity at the end of the season, maybe, to kind of ruffle a few feathers or... They'll give them this round to themselves with a few newbies, see how things go, and maybe pull a Danielle Staub and bring her back for season six or seven. I could very well see that also happening. I guess we'll just have to find out. And Monica, girl, if you're listening, 
I don't think what you did was horrible. I don't think that what you did, you deserve, you deserve to be crucified for. They gave you too much smoke. Um, smoke that should have been given to Jen. They've compared basically apples to oranges when talking about you and Jen in such close proximity whilst discussing the things that went down. And yeah, basically... It, it it's crazy to me how they 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 let things slide with Jen, but then they want to be on high alert with Monica. It's yes, they they've learned from Jen. Yes, they they've been hurt by Jen, but was it with Monica that serious? I mean, I don't know. That's just my thing. Now let's move on to, and also she did a great job. Uh, as a first-time housewife, so yeah, props to let let's give some flowers to Monica. Let's move on to Heather, baby. The way Heather turned it all the way around for herself from being. Not so liked last season to being the MVP of this season. And baby, I just wish that Monica would have taken a few pages out of Heather's book. Because Heather knows how to perform. And knows how to give an apology to the audience. That was exactly it. That's exactly how you do it. Do I think some of that apology came a little too late and a little too, you know, coincidental to the fact that she could have gotten in real, real bad trouble for the fact that she threw everybody else under the bus, even in front of the lawyers when the whole black eye thing happened? That There is definitely some phoniness to that, and I... I th- feel that and I'll stand by that and that is just my opinion but she definitely had those screenshots and those receipts prepared to go against Monica she did sometimes speak over her and discredit the fact that reality Von Tees did sometimes defend the women to you know seeing how Jen treated all of them And basically, you know, speaking also from her own experience, I I think that it was nice to defend them. But then again, even if she if Monica uses the excuse of, well, somebody else logged on and called you a skank face bitch. I can see from Heather's point of view on how you wouldn't be able to trust someone like that in your life. I definitely see that I am was a little, you know, in delusions myself about this as to, you know, oh, they shouldn't be so hard on her. But now I truly see how it impacted Heather. She got really emotional at the end. I think she did the right thing for, you know, herself to kind of expose Monica in Bermuda. She kind of took her power. But all of that smoke, I mean... Let's say 50% of that smoke that she gave Monica, I think was actually meant for Jen. But then again, Heather, I want you to go to therapy, look inward, and ask yourself, ask yourself, why in the hell are you compelled to suck up to Jen? Who is Jen Shaw in this world? Who? I mean, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. To me, at least. But I get that she was scared. I get that Jenna had, you know, controversial and maybe powerful people behind her. Um, And that Heather was scared. I mean, that that's human. I get it. But I personally would have taken another approach. But we're also individual. And that is just so subjective to say, oh, I would have done this. I would have done that. So I'm trying to be as fair as I can to Heather and also with you know the whole um 
what was it what they talked about that I wanted to touch on that was so super important. Give me a quick second. Um Yeah, and the black eye thing where they try to come up with a story. It's it's and and she was just so in it and then Yes, watch what happens live. I wanted to touch on the black eye in context to the Watch What Happens Live episode. Heather said that she hopes that Jen feels uprooted that they kind of came for Monica. Heather, you make no sense. It gives very much delusional. Why the heck would you say that? Why would you even talk about Jen in that way and Andy looked at you like you're crazy and I mean maybe you should go to therapy and get that checked out why you feel a a sense of loyalty to Jen even though she called you those nasty names and those nasty profanities that I won't repeat because it has hurt her so much understandably so yeah I mean, that's pretty much what happened in this season, in this reunion of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad that at least one franchise is done because having Beverly Hills, Married to Medicine, Potomac, Salt Lake City, and Miami on all at the same time, you got me... Every day saying, Mm-mm-mm, today drained me, honey. It has been a lot of work, a lot of whirlwind. I stopped reviewing my Miami about seven or six weeks ago because I just, I can't. I mean, I, I'm enjoying Miami. I'm tuning in every single week, but I'm just not too hot on reviewing it because we're, the storyline is still moving in this in the same spaces that's what i'm trying to basically say but anyways leave your thoughts in the comments down below let me know what you think about this finale about this reunion finale about those revelations i am curious to see how you feel about everything like and subscribe hit the notification bell down below and i'll make sure to see you guys in my next one thanks so much for watching